Well, hello again. Been a long time. I know you miss me. Let's do some molarity. Molarity is one of the ways that scientists quantify the concentration of a solution. In our everyday life, we can use words like concentrated or dilute whenever we're talking about things. You know, you go to the grocery store and you go to buy a thing of laundry detergent. It might say 3x concentrated on it. And fantastic. Makes you buy it. Might work, might not. Who knows? But that's daily life. You know, we run into things that might or might not work all the time. In science, however, particularly in chemistry, we've got to be very careful with the amount of stuff that we're dealing with. So we need a better way to approach it. We need a way to quantify it or put numbers on it. And molarity is one of those things we can do. I'm looking out the window here going, wow, I've never seen this in your lot. So empty. I could have driven to work today and got out on time. Make sure all you seniors watch my molality video because I did teach today. Molarity, abbreviated with a capital M, equals the moles of solute over the liters of solution. <clears throat> Again, abbreviated with capital M, that's important because the other one, molality, that I'll be doing the video for next is abbreviated with a lowercase m. So they do mean two different things. Make sure you're aware of that, not only when you write your measurements down, but when you read test questions and things like that as well. Make sure you know capital M for molarity. And it's moles of solute on top. Solute is what is dissolved in the solution, and it's liters of solution on the bottom. This is a total. There's nothing in here about the solvent, and that's important because in the next equation there will be. You've got to read these things carefully and make sure you know what you're dealing with. So it's the moles of the solute, the substance that is dissolved, divided by the liters of solution or the total amount of mixture that you have. So at its simplest, you would have a problem that looks something like this one. Question number one. What is the molarity of a solution that contains 4.53 moles of lithium nitrate in 2.85 liters of solution. In this question, we have moles and liters. And if we look back at our equation, that's exactly what we need. Moles of solute, in this case, lithium nitrate, and liters of solution. So all we got to do is substitute and solve for this one. Molarity, capital M, equals moles of solute, divided by liters of solution. So that would be the 4.53 on top and the 2.85 on the bottom. So let me punch this in my calculator real quick. 4.53 divided by 2.85 is 1.589 We'll round that 1.59. Fills up the calculator display. So we're going to round. Remember, the test you're taking are multiple choice. So as long as you're close enough, you'll get it. Unit-wise, we just put that capital M there because that's how we abbreviate molarity. And it's always good to write down the formula of your compound. This is lithium nitrate. Lithium is Li. Nitrate, ATE means polyatomic ion. ATE and ITE are the endings we put on polyatomic ions. So I look at my table of polyatomic ions, that's NO3. Now lithium is a group one, so it is a plus one oxidation number. Nitrate is in that table of polyatomic ions. It says it has a negative one oxidation number. Plus one, minus one, those cancel out, so there are no subscripts. And the formula is LiNO3. Now that's the straightforward application. That's one where you don't have to do too much thinking, too much work to get it done. As we know, chemistry is never that easy. 
there's always some kind of other work we have to do, and that's where a problem like this comes into play. There's plenty to do in this one, like figure out formulas, calculate formula masses, do mole mass conversions, do metric conversions. This single question here tests at least five different concepts that we covered in chemistry. So you've got to know all five concepts to get to the right answer. You've got to know all five concepts on a multiple choice test to even get any credit. This is the difference. It says grams here. And because it says grams, I don't have what I need for my equation. I need moles and liters. So I got to get that grams converted into moles. And that's where most of the work in this problem comes in. I'm doing osmium-3 fluoride. Osmium is OS. That's its symbol from the periodic table. The Roman numeral 3 is its oxidation number. Fluoride ends in IDE. IDE tells me just a plain old non-metal. It's fluorine. And fluorine is in group 17. Group 17 has a negative 1 oxidation number. So the 3 comes over here and the 1 goes over there. OS F3. Now that we have a formula, we need to do a formula mass. There is one osmium in this particular formula, 190.23. And, you know, you're doing multiple choice tests here. So really, do you need the decimal place values on that? I'd say not. You know, you get it close enough, you'll be able to pick what the right answer is in pretty much every question. So we can just leave this as a whole number if we want to. Fluorine. There's three of those, and each one is 19. So 3 times 19 is 57. Add them up. And we get 247 grams. That is the molar mass or formula mass of osmium-3 fluoride. If you have any issues with that, go back, look through my video history. You'll find a video on doing formula masses. Watch that and go through it again. If you have any problems with the formula, go back and find the formulas for ionic compounds thing and uh, watch it. Now, with this number, we can write an equivalence, one mole. Osmium fluoride is equal to 247 grams of osmium-3 fluoride. Now we'll use that to convert these grams into moles. So we always start our equation with the number that we're given, times and then a fraction bar. And then we're going to put grams on the bottom. And the reason we're doing that is because we're starting off with grams. Whatever you're starting off with here has to go on the bottom. The other number, the one mole, goes on top. Ignore the 1 because it doesn't do anything mathematically. The 247 is on the bottom, so we'll divide by that. 214.2 divided by 247. Calculator spits out a big old number, 0.86720647777. We're going to round that to 0.87. And that's the moles that we need to do our molarity calculation. Now, this one's got even more work in it because this one, I haven't given you liters of solution. I've given you milliliters of solution. So you're going to have to convert that as well. Both numbers in this question have to be converted into the correct units for our equation because our equation is very specific. Our equation says I have to have moles of solute. I gave you grams, so we did that conversion. And it says liters of solution. So I gave you milliliters. we got to convert it to liters. King Henry died by drinking chocolate milk. Kilo, hecta, deca, base, deci, ceni, milli. I gave you milli. We need base unit. One, two, three places to the left. So I take 67.3. One, two, three places over. Fill the empty place value with a zero. So it is 0 0.0673 liters. Now to do the final calculation, molarity equals 
mole solute over liters solution. So moles of solute is that number, 0 0.87. Liters of solution is that number, 0 0.673. Divide them out. 0.87 divided by 0.673 is 1.3 molar. There you have it. We want to put that formula on there so we know what we're talking about. OSF3, you never want to put a solution up without the chemical's name or, or at least formula on it. So there you go. Molarity. One of the most important concepts in the unit. I'd say you can almost count on that, having some question one or two on the final exam.